What's it like playing to older crowds? Well, it's just like quite boring because though you don't get get to see the kids like jumping up and down mm. to the music. You just see it's like playing to old people. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes when you get a good crowd, though, it's, it, it does get hype, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but not the hype that you're used to. Yeah. yeah. You want the hype. <laughs> um, Archie, tell me about the girls. <laughs> tell me about the girls in Archie's world. I mean, you must be inundated with ladies. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, believe that, and if you want more of that belief, you have to go to Television app, free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture sports, and then some. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Some of you may have seen him trotting around the, uh, the globe uh, in the underage sector of drum and bass and beyond. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have him on, and I feel I, I feel like this is going to be when I'm 60 years old. He's going to remind me <laughs> of what we did when he was what eight, eight and a half, nine. nine. Archie inside the building, <laughs> DJ Archie, come on. And Stuart, how are you, my brother? I'm good, thank you. I am gassed. I'm absolutely gassed. You're the youngest guest I've ever had on a podcast. How are yeah. you feeling, my brother? Amazed. Yeah, you're amazed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already had a chat, haven't we? You know, we've already set the worlds to rights. How is your world at the moment, Archie? Tell us a story. Really good. Yeah? yeah. Are you enjoying yourself at the moment? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Loads of stuff. <laughs> there it is. You've been going out gallivanting, doing raves way beyond our, you know, <clears throat> our age range of wish lists as, as, as a young man. Certainly. Hey, talk to me about the day in the life of Archie. Well, normally I do practicing every day. Do you? Yeah. To what level? Like just DJing for hours? Not hours, no. No. Like an hour, half an hour, do a TikTok live. Do you? Yeah. Do you? And you enjoy that? Because there's a lot of circuitry and a lot of uh, equipment being used at the moment. So you just jump on that and new music and stuff like that. You're on it? Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. that's crazy. What do your friends think? They think I'm really cool and... <laughs> Don't doubt that for a second, brother! <laughs> and they, they always, um, like, all on my side when I, whenever, like, I fall over in the playground or something. Yeah, what, what, they're like, They'll leave him alone, it's, it's DJ Archie, just pick him up. <laughs> Put him on your shoulders, man. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. They, love, they love that you're a DJ. Yeah. Incredible. Um, you do a lot of Raver Tots, don't you? Yeah, a you lot. You do a lot of these events. And big up DJ Mills as well and Charlotte Devaney, of course. Um, they've championed you from the beginning. They love you, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And so what's it like being in those environments where you've got big sound and big party and loads of people watching you? It feels like it's just amazing because I'm in, in control of the cr- crowd and... Stuff like that. You're a rock star? Yeah. Rock star levels. Have your friends been to see you perform? Um, you've had a few, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've been doing it a while now, haven't you? Yeah. So what, do you think Do you think a lot of it is like, yeah, we're going to bring them in for a little bit? Yeah. So the playground knows about it? Yeah. <laughs> and then you become the cool kid. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Come on, Archie. <laughs> Stuart, how are you, my brother? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, really good. Yeah, you, I mean, you're you're the, the faithful confidant. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. dad dadager. Dad dadager. There yeah. you go. <laughs> See, that's the <laughs> protocol we like. <laughs> What's it like being with your pops and like do? It, I mean, it must be a blessing. Yeah. Oh, I bet it is. I yeah, it's good. It's good father son time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even even when we're at home trying to find new music and sit there listening to stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, it's really good. I mean, I'm just happy that he loves it the same same way I do. You've really. got to be in a, a pig in bits. Yeah, you really have because Completely. you know when you've got this 
young man that has so much skill and a passion for drum and bass and DJing. Yeah. Well, just plug in the coordinates. Let's go. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as a parent, I mean, you know, when when you're trying to raise your kids, you you know, you think. I, I personally think, you know, to try and help them make the best of their opportunities while well, mm. well, they haven't got the opportunity to do that themselves, you know. Mm. So that's all I've really been looking to sort of nurture within him is, uh, you know, just to keep 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 moving him forward. And if he's found something that he is really good at mm. at an early age, you know, he's just had a bit of a touch, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so, you know, he may decide in years to come that... He don't want to do it. He, he, you know, yeah. some, some, he takes some other path, but yeah. at least... You know, we've made the most of the opportunity that he's had, you know, based on the, the skills that he, he showed me when he was three. Skills. You know? Archie, yeah. let's talk about skills. Yeah. All right, so where does your head go when you're faced with the turntables, you're first with the decks and you've got the mixer and you've been given the songs to play? Yeah. Like, how do you formulate that? How do you work that in your head? How do you, how do you figure out what you're going to play and how that mixes and what you're going to press and do? So my dad, um, when I was younger, um, he put like colours out, and then when he and when he goes like an L uh, shape to me, it means levels to turn it up a little bit because I can't hear it. Ooh, yeah, we've got we've got we've got a few. Like, obviously, you know, as we as he was, you know, three, four, five years old. Yeah. That really, all I was trying to teach him was the composition of the music. So yeah. um, when he was sort of three and four. He was he was mainly playing my set, so I made it a bit like Guitar Hero. Mm-hmm. So there was different coloured coloured oh, yeah. markers, yeah, that gave him instructions on what to do. Um, you know, you know what, and that gave him the understanding of you know what's an intro, what's mm. a build up, mm. what's a drop, what's a breakdown, all of those those things. Um, and then when he was five, about f- you know he just turned five, I took all the colours away, and then he just did it. You know that so that was the so that was the stabilizers off. Yeah, basic, basically, yeah, yeah. Because once those, wow. you know, once he he understood the phrases within the music, then that was sort of within him. Then it became just a natural timing. Well, it's the creative formula. That, yeah. What you've what you 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 in, implemented there is creative formulas. So with colors, L, R, and working within that, Archie, you've got like you. This is like a a creative education you've been given. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was just primary primary colours, you know, for for certain certain actions yeah. like green for go, red for stop, you know. But you know blue, that's like that's blue like was a, loop, you know. That's a stu- like that's a that's a student. Um, what's it called? Um, like a syllabus. Type. Syllabus. Yeah, that's yeah, a syllabus of. in itself. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you still apply, Archie? Do you still apply that now into some of your? If it gets really if it gets really hard and you're trying to figure out something, yeah. do you go back to the colour scheme? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do. do you? Only when I get a little bit stuck on like what I'm gonna do or my transition for mm. the other song. Mm. Yeah, or, or or if there's a specific mix that we've, you know, we're trying to trying to work out, and you have to start it at exactly the, the, a certain point yeah, to yeah. get that mix to work in that format. Then then maybe, but we don't do it often, do we? No, not really. No, it's usually now it's just he just he just cracks on and just, just on, yeah, yeah. Just, just does whatever. Archie, so when it comes to the songs themselves, yeah. like how do you how do you program the songs in in an order? How do you how do you figure out what s- sounds right? Uh, well, I've listened to like loads of loads of songs that I've already mixed together. If if I've done one at like another festival and it sounds really good, mm. then I put that in um a, like a track order, and then I play them, and then I go into a different folder and try to find some more new ones. Something to the same tone or yeah. taste. Yeah. Wow. yeah, I mean, it, I mean, if he, you 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 try mixing key, don't you? Yeah. You know, I so do, in yeah. the key of the music, obviously, mm. if you you're mixing in two two songs of the same key, they're gonna sound. They're gonna sound. They're right. gonna sound good. Yeah. Um, together generally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I mean he. He just goes from what he remembers, you know. Yeah. If he if he's done a good mix in the past, he's like those two those two tracks worked really well together. Mm. Then on the new equipment, you can just tag them, so you can hit a tag tag, and then it starts building you up a tag list. Yeah. And then you can go in there and you start right. They're all your all your yeah. best tunes, and it kind of orders itself a little bit. Got you. But yeah, to be honest, he he just 
yeah, it, sc- it yeah, yeah, yeah. Scoots, scoots around and looks and thinks, oh yeah, that will that work well. He, he uses a lot of his own intuition, really. Yeah, of course, because yeah. there's a template. You have a template in your mind, right? So it's not just like there, there's a folder. You remember a mix you done, and then you apply that template to that sound. Yeah. Say I had like a hundred songs, and they all sounded good. I would go, like, I wouldn't start from the top and go down. Mm. I'll go in different orders because then people will think, oh, he's just doing the same mixes, he ain't doing anything or, or mm. something like that. Mm. How important is that to you, Archie? Uh, really important, yeah. Mm. Well, you want to you make sure that every time it hits differently. Yeah. Yeah, it's fresh, and it's, yeah, it's fresh right? Yeah. 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 If it's really, I mean, that is, that's the biggest problem with DJs when with the internet where you're... Mixes are always constantly out. Do you feel that there's a pressure to keep that going? Um, sometimes and sometimes not, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can imagine like the new songs make all the difference, right? Yeah. yeah. How often do you get new songs, Archie? Oh, like... Every day. Every day. Every, every day. <laughs> yeah. well, people just want you to spin. There's a lot of people that send this <gasps> stuff. I mean, l- luckily we've found some really, really good producers over the years that, that um, you know, that give him... You know, tunes before they come out and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, wh- one of the good things about that is that one of the issues that we have is when you're streaming on things like Facebook and mm. these these sort of platforms, sometimes you get um, copyright claims yeah, yeah. and that mutes the track. Yeah, so when does, you're playing yeah. a lot of dubs, um, things that aren't released, mm. you know it's not going to get muted. Yeah. So, you know, it's really good for, for the streaming aspect mm. of it. Um, so. Actually, you know what? That's a really good point because if you, as a DJ, can't you can't perform in clubs like normal clubs. Yeah. So you're then focusing on the internet. So you're gonna get the earliest dubs possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, which makes you the the figurehead to get the dubs to quicker. Yeah, and play them so the people get more yeah. promotion to the song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Online more than anything. Yeah. Or the underage gigs, which will inevitably become the new audience. Yeah. Well, he's, he, he has, he has wow. started now to, to play um, a lot more sort of over 18 stuff. Yeah. Um, we went up to Wolverhampton last week and you were on a, you were on a line-up with um, SASAS and Nicky Black Market and that was an over 18s event. I love but it. There's certain ways that you can navigate getting through the licensing of you know him being in, in an over 18s venue with um, child performance license explain that council. explain that this is the technical <laughs> bit right archie but archie just yeah. got shot like a rock star <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah basically give yeah. me the techniques on that yeah so i mean you have to you have to apply to the council to get right. a child performance license and then you know they have to have certain stipulations you know going in through the back entrance having security with them you know this and that you know to make sure he's fully protected yeah. and that he's only going to be in there for the duration of his set etc you know it's not like he's going to be hanging around or whatever mm. um with the sort of general population of the club and mm. stuff um but yeah once you go through those um sort of channels mm. then then he then he's able to you know play uh, over 18s stuff which he's, he's now starting to do more regularly mm. so l- over the years we've done a lot of raver tot stuff but i think we've only got two of those this year um good so. that's what we like to hear progression yeah. right yeah progression what's it like playing to older crowds well it's just like quite boring because though you don't get get to see the kids like jumping up and down mm. to the music you just see it's like playing to old people. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when you get a good crowd, though, it's, it, get, it does get hype, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But not the hype that you're used to. Yeah. yeah. You want the hype. <laughs> um, Archie, tell me about the girls. <laughs> tell me about the girls in Archie's world. I mean, you must be inundated with ladies. <laughs> 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 Uh, Come on, let's uh, talk about the ladies. Uh, I can't really think. Yeah, I don't bet you can. I bet you it's undisclosed, you understand? There's some things that are best left in the VIP rooms, right? <laughs> Gentleman never tells, isn't it? Gentleman never tells. That's, That's the it. truth. That's yeah. the truth. But have you thought about, you know, the long term of, you know, br- bringing... Archie into the fold and then you know 
letting a swan be a swan, going off on tour. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I have no doubt you're going to be the f- the faithful tour manager. Yeah, there's I, with, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, you, you've got some pretty big bookings this year. I mean, last year we did Glastonbury, didn't we? And um, this year we've got Tomorrowland. Yeah, Tomorrowland. Yeah, that's going to be banging. Yeah, it's gonna be. That's gonna be. A, that's the big show, isn't it? Yeah. So, do you feel the pressure, Archie? Do you feel the pressure of um the the youthful pressure, the young, the little man pressure of having the idea of you're gonna bring the next generation of drum and bass heads into into drum and bass? Um. Yeah. Sometimes. I bet you do. Yeah. Because you see, like the older um audience and the younger audience. Yes, like. Andy C, he's older than me, and he's got like more followers than me. Mm. Cause I'm just we- making my way up to his level, and then when I'll probably be like the top. You will do. Be at the top, yeah. Without fun, without question, you will be. Um, talk to me about that journey and the, and the likes and the followers. How important is that from a social point of view? Well, it's pretty important to me because like if our account got hacked or something. I wouldn't be really that happy. Which, Do you think, which, I think which, that... it, which it did the other way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so it did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with it, it was, it it was gone within about 30 seconds and then I'm getting WhatsApp messages demanding 800 quid um, for the return, the safe return of it. I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, yeah Do you they, see how important you are? Yeah. You got I mean, eight hundred pound ransom on your yeah. account. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, I that, that, that particular account. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> don't you don't doubt that for a second. That particular account though. That was the first one. The Instagram account was the first one that we started. Yeah. So it's basically like in chronological order over the last six years, mm. his photo album. Okay. So yeah. luckily they didn't delete any of the media and we were able to get it back using a selfie video. Um, if they had deleted all the content, then we would never have been able to get it back. But obviously they haven't got his face. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Such a high demand are you right now? Yeah. Huh? Wow. Yeah, I think... Perhaps there's a lot of pressure for young people and internet and the success, particularly if you're of the age where you're still on your journey to being, you know, the the wider clubland. You know, yeah. it's quite a hard thing to, you know, to yeah. work through, isn't it? Yeah. Does that does that play on your mind a lot? Does it make you feel the way? Well, sometimes it depends. Mm. I can imagine so. Yeah. Because everyone's on social media now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think that Archie? Do you think in your, you know, thinking future? Do you think um, perhaps one day, social media will take over Clubland? Oh, it's a hard question. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Do you reckon? Maybe with things like AI, yeah. I suppose, and yeah. you know, virtual DJs, and vir- you could be sitting at home with those new Apple glasses on, yeah. and you could be in a, an online venue, yeah, and you could be sitting there next to your friends. You know, yeah. interacting with them, but everyone's in different locations. You know, ne- yeah. you never know what's going to happen, do you? Really? Perhaps that's the future. Perhaps you're on the on the beginnings. Yeah. And when you get to the threshold of being able to go into bigger clubs, then maybe you're already ahead of the curve. Yeah. You're ahead of it, and you don't need to go to the clubs because you. Mm. Do you think about that, Stuart? Um. Not really. I mean, I, I mean, I. It's worth I, considering, I, I, isn't it? I, I, I certainly think about the opportunity that he's got to to grow alongside his follower base, mm-hmm. because there aren't that many people that have been able to start at sort of three, four, five years old, mm-hmm. and these kids because we we get emails, messages, phone calls from yeah. from parents, you know, saying that you know my son's DJing now, my daughter's DJing now because we saw Archie online really? and all of that sort of stuff. You, you get that every single week. Pioneer, <coughs> you're a pioneer. Yeah. yeah, you're pushing through the. You're pushing above what people expect, and the kids are getting involved. Your your audience are getting involved DJing. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, it's created a bit of a blueprint for for younger DJs. Um, yeah. You know, through through the media that we've put online, it's, it shows that it's possible, and that that's a comment that we get a lot. Is yeah. you know, thanks th- thanks for showing um, you know my children it's possible because I didn't think it would be. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's really quite nice. Is the you know the amount of other um, action that it's created, not just you know yeah. not just himself, you know, so other people out there. With the, with that new audience, yeah, with the new audience that's been created because of Archie stepping up. Mm. Archie, do you feel like there's competition behind you? Yeah, I I feel like I do. Yeah. Do you? 
Yeah, because there's these like s people, they're trying to scratch and they're learning how to scratch and they're actually doing really good really? as a kid, yeah. Really? Do you do you celebrate that? Yeah. Yeah? You rate it? Yeah. Yeah. Can you scratch? Well, I can, but like, not good. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of your goals for the year, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Add, add that little string to your bow. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think for a lot of young um, parents and people that we know, not me, not a parent, you understand, but we understand the importance of tradition and taking club culture to that next level. And sometimes perhaps it's harder for um, to see the wood for the trees. Yeah, sure. Know? Because because we're so used to a certain way of. Um, Understanding clubland, yeah, and it's changing, definitely. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the venues that you know we used to go to as you know in our youth starting to close down. You mm -hmm. know, they can't. Um, you know, they're not sustainable now, which is which is a bit of a problem um, because there may there may not be that many venues for him to play at. No, I mean, it seems that you're starting to get these sort of mega venues mm -hmm. um, that are starting to crop up again. But, you know, there's not really an abundance of, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred person yeah. sort of clubs yeah. um, to, to play at these well, days. Even five hundred, to be yeah. Actually, yeah, They're you're closing right. at a rate of knots. That's it's, right. Yeah. And some of, it's, either, it's either a small amount or a seismic it, amount. It, exactly, yeah. It's the same in the yeah. grime world and in the, in the hip-hop world as well. Yeah. You've, got, you've kind of got to create your environment, which is something you were talking about. You've mentioned about doing you know creating an environment for yeah yeah i mean I, that very thing yeah i mean i've i've, I've been um think, thinking a lot over the over the recent months about um and i'm building a business plan at the moment to um have a, a mixed use venue um i'm looking I, th I think it's going to be called academy and it, i want it to be a bit like a, an arts academy really mm -hmm. um you know, have a venue space for people to use. And you can have put parties on and stuff like that inside. But I'd like a graffiti studio in there. You know, for people um, to come in and teach kids graffiti. Mm. They have a an area for teaching kids. Um, you know how to DJ and stuff. I'd like there to be a record shop in there, a coffee shop. Ah. You know that type that type of environment yeah. as well, so people can sit there and listen to listen to music and you know both um, you know sales of vinyl and digital and. Um, yeah, I think I think what we're lacking now is movement, you know, because Community everything it, it, everything yeah. everything is so accessible these days. Um, you know, back in the day, I used to go up to the record shops and I'd go to Boogie Times in in Romford or up to Black Market Records, yeah. go and sit there and you know, two or three hours listening listening to to music and um, trying to find tracks that not a lot of people had you, mm. you know you're trying to get the test presses and the you know those limited sort of dub dub dub, dub tracks that um you know in limited runs so i think you know i've been speaking to a few artists and um you know potentially getting them to create like an academy dub pack Ooh, as an example that is so um, good that, that something Ooh. something that's not sold online mm. ever you know they'd have to come and purchase the uh you know, limited edition USBs again because kids haven't got anything to physically collect with yeah. digital downloads. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so limited edition USBs and wow. you know, different colours and stuff. So good. Yeah, and that means people are going to sort of travel, and it makes it a bit a lot more community based because yeah. the best thing about you know going to Black Market Records was going and seeing it. Oh, there's Brocky, and you know, yeah. you know all the you know all all these DJs that you don't get to you know within touching distance of you know to speak to really mm. because they're in and out the back door and you know whatever when they've done their set you know you're actually sitting there and you're you're, you're selecting music with yeah. them you know at the same time so it's a yeah. it's a very intimate affair isn't it yeah yeah so i i mean i i certainly think um it's something that will, that will do do very well yeah. um and yeah, I'm just trying to trying to figure out trying, the, to, figure out. trying to figure it out and the best way to do it. Really. You'll have an Archie tribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Archie tribe. I'm following you, mate. Yeah. All right, favorite DJ. Favorite DJ Archie. Andy C. Andy C. All day. Yeah. All day. All day. Second favorite. Head X. Head X. Okay. Okay. Now we're moving. Third. Boo. Boo. There you go. Fourth. Chaser Slayers. Chaser Slayers. <laughs> okay. Favorite song right now, Archie. 
Oh. Is it in our top three now? This is now we're into some deep territory. Think about last night. What did what did you hammer last night? Oh, I know, cowboy. Yeah, cowboy. Cowboy. Yeah, yeah. cowboy boy. Who? That's Don. That's dominator, isn't it? I think Logan. Yeah. Logan sent that to you, didn't he? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Favorite computer game. Favorite Fortnite. Com- Fortnite computer game. Favorite. Yeah. yeah. Favorite. Uh, favorite snack before DJing, Archie. Pretzels. Pretzels. Are you shake what? Chocolate pretzels? Salt pretzels? Salt, yeah. Salt pretzels. Why? Just tastes nice. Tastes nicer. What, nicer than chocolate? Nicer than white chocolate pretzels. You cra- you crazy? No. <laughs> <laughs> you like a salty snack, don't you? Favourite after gig. Fi- Favourite after gig food. Uh, What's that little ritual? McDonald's. McDonald's. Ah. McDonald's. Straight McDonald's. Come on. After oh. we've done the radio. Oh, uh, like crappy chicken. Cra- crappy chicken. Crappy chicken. Like go to one of like, the, 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 the the worst chicken shops. Chicken you can cottage. Find. Yeah. Chicken cottage. And then there's nice. Uh, there'll be some. Of, there'll be some <laughs> of my audience right now that will be t- contesting <laughs> that the chicken cottage <laughs> is the bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We try and find the try and find the worst one, and it usually tastes the best, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, they they always work, don't they? they yeah. It does the job. It does yeah. the job. How many gigs are you doing at the moment? A week. Uh, well, you, you were on the radio yesterday, weren't you? Yeah. And then, yeah, because you did the radio stuff as well. That's yeah. Right. Um, and you got one on Sunday. Yeah. Down in Bournemouth. How we, do you keep up? How do you we, guys keep up? Well, to be to be fair, we try not to do too much. You know, obviously, I, I don't want it to become like a job for him, right. and sort of him burn out from it. So, yeah. you know, it's. What do you do at home? What can I know? Hold on. What do you do at home? What, what do you guys do at home? When it's not DJing. So um, music and so. I play Fortnite. Yeah, that's it. And that's it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And what do you do at home, Stuart? What's, you know, just regular family man? Or are you managing, you know, buy, sell, buy, sell? No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, yeah, re- regular fa- regular family man. I mean, I, I do spend a lot of my personal time, you know, helping helping Archie, you know, whether it's sort of finding new music or, you know, planning up and coming events and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a reasonable amount of work that I have to do outside of outside of the office hours. But um But he loves it. Yeah. I, I just find it so fascinating. It, it's time well spent. Yeah, of course it is. For sure. Of course. Because you know, Archie, you go out there and you rock crowds. Yeah. What's your favourite sh- show you've done up to now? The favourite show you've done. Where you go to the playground the next day and you go, brother, you won't believe what happened this weekend. <laughs> What's your favourite show? Oh, that's hard. He's done, done a lot. So many. Yeah. You've done so many. You've done so many. You're nine years old. You've done so many shows. <laughs> You've done more than me at nine years old. Um, that's hard. I, I mean, my, my personal favourite was Glastonbury because it was something that we did together. You Glastonbury. Know. Yeah. Man on Glastonbury. And you? Tomorrowland. And Tomorrowland. Well, this year we'll do that, yeah. Yeah. Done Glastonbury at nine. What have you done at nine years old? <laughs> <laughs> Get right it. I think that was at when I was eight years old. So you was younger then? Yeah. Yeah. You know how hard it is for some people to get to Glastonbury in their thirties? <laughs> yeah. You done it. You done it. In, it was it was hard enough for us to be fair. Yeah, I mean, the only reason the only reason that we were able to do that was because he's under twelve. Mm. You know, because the the stage that we were on had a limited allocation of tickets, mm. and um, I got his ticket, and because he was under twelve, he got in on that ticket. So, if it hadn't have been hadn't have been for that um, his age, you, mm. you know, being under twelve, it, we probably wouldn't have been able to do it. That's just so incredible. Ho- hopefully, incredible. hopefully, we're back on. Back, back on it again this year, and you know we can uh, we can do it again because we we had a good laugh. All, we were there all week. Yeah, of course. I mean that's a week that's a week long pleasure tour yeah. of music. Yeah. What did you learn about Glastonbury? Though? What What did you learn not to do? Burn myself. Yeah. Do what? <laughs> I burnt myself. He was How? he was whacking the fire. Yeah, and I said to him, I said, "It's windy." I said. Don't whack the fire. So if one of those embers is going to jump up, mm. it'll go down your wellies or go, do, you know, or whatever. It'll mm. stick to you. Five minutes later, whack, jumped up on the side of his neck. And you can, you know, you can and see. it looked like you a can, love bite. Yeah, it does. And it looked like a love now, bite. Now it looks and like... And he comes back from Glastonbury, <laughs> yeah. mum proud, seeing the love bite on your yeah. neck. Yeah, you didn't enjoy that bit, did you? It no. wasn't fun. No, but I don't do it. Won't do it again, though, will you? <laughs> <laughs> What's the most... 
significant moment in your career so far? What's the, what is the thing you're just like, wow, I'm so happy I did that? Um, well... Oh. Well, it's got to be when you were four. Think yeah. About I got my Guinness World Record when I was four years old. What? What, youngest DJ? Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So you're in the Guinness Book of World Records? Yeah. What you're up there with yeah, Harry... Guinness, yeah, Guinness. Yeah, Guinness. Well, you're up what? there with Harry Shotter. You're up there with Harry Shotter. Yeah, he's got one as well, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, four four years old and 130 days. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Where did, where did you do the record? Rover Tots. We... Oh, we, where were we living? It weren't Rover Tots. Um... You were young. I don't expect you to remember much. Yeah, I don't remember much. It was, in, it was in Hong Kong, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. You were in Hong Kong? Yeah, we lived there, yeah. You lived in Hong Kong? Yeah. I was born so, in Dubai. You were born in Dubai? Yeah. Serves you right. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, it was fantastic you're here. But it sounds like you were well-travelled from a very early day. Yeah. So you were in Dubai, Hong Kong, and then you come back here to bless us with the yeah. turntables. Yep. Godlike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we can't forget one... One rave that we done, we done Germany, didn't we? Oh yeah, we went to Germany. Yeah, did a little festival out there. How was that? Yeah. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah good. How yeah. was the crowd? Was it good? Yeah, there, there was like a skate park, and I found. So I, I met someone there while I was doing parkour before my set mm-hmm. to get me warmed up and hype. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, and they they had a, a spare scooter, and then I said, "Can I use it for a bit?" And then loads of people were skating around. Loads of people were crashing into each other. I was just, I was just circling around. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you had people trying to teach you how to, uh, t- teach you tricks on skateboards and stuff well, like so that. You, were, well. you weren't DJ, you were actually doing it. Yeah. No, this was before the before the set. Yeah, he was he was just racing around the skate park. Wow. And then he played you played for two hours, didn't you? Yeah. It was a long set that one. Yeah, but it was. I think that was the longest one you've ever done. No, two, I've two, done. Apart from Stars and Deezer's birthday party, oh, we, big up Stars and Deezer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. Because yeah, he, yeah, he was young, he was young, but he, he, I think he played for an hour or so, and then we, we said, oh, you know, we were going to shoot off because we had to, uh, we had a long drive home, mm-hmm. and he was like, no, nah, we're not going. He was like, really? I want to go back on, and he went on for another hour and a half. You must have been about five then. I but think, how so. do you program that? How do you figure that out in your head, Archie? That yeah, I'm just going to do another hour, and you know. You, obviously, you've got enough folders going on and stuff, but you feel the energy and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, well, I was going to go home, but I was like thinking, nah, I'm not going home yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're not ready for me to leave and I'm not ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know Stars and Deezer wouldn't like, say no because I'm a good DJ. Yeah, yeah, I don't doubt anybody would want, you know, if Archie's in the building, it's like, oh, we've got to keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, my brother. I'm so proud of you, and it's so awesome that you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, Godspeed, you keep on and building up that career with your with your dad. You know. Yeah. Super important. What's the future, guys? What is the future? I don't. I, I don't know. Go really. Ibiza. Yeah, you want to go to a <laughs> you want to go to a Well, yeah. do you know what? I've never been. Yeah, and to uh, I had the opportunity to go a couple of years ago, and I kind of backed it because I knew I was going to get to go with him at some point. And I quite want to share that with him, mm. you know. So it's both new, new to us both, mm. uh, but certainly somewhere where we need to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have a little party on the beach. Yeah, get your yeah. Ibiza trunks on and see where the yeah. where the music takes you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, do man. do one in a submarine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Bit of pasha, all of that business. Yeah. yeah. You know, a couple of sherbets. Who knows where? It'll do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, absolute pleasure. Archie and Stuart inside the place for Killer Keller Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me, my brother. And That's more right. speed. Let's get you back in soon. Nice one. 100%. Our yeah. like it was out of fashion, are we? You know, another day in the street culture trenches. And, uh, yeah, the youth is giving us optimism that we're in safe hands. Killer Keller Podcast. Our like it was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Right. Peace. <laughs> 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 that was. There we go. Just like